everybody, I'm Victor. Thank you for watching this video. This video is about Lake Michigan and the rocks you can find on Lake Michigan shorelines. And also exploring the underwater landscape. Well, I was inspired by two things. One, I grew up around Lake Michigan shorelines. Two, I was very inspired by the book Lake Michigan Rock Pickers Guide produced by the authors of Bruce Miller and Kevin Garthier. Well, let's get started today, folks. I'll show you my collection here. And you really just gotta love them. I'm gonna let you guess the types that they are. Oh, by the way, I really like this one. It looks like clouds with, with a happy face in it. I gave him the name Clouds. And then I got some Fern Creek Tillite and a lot of other good igneous and metamorphic stones. <clears throat> And this one you can't see with the camera, but it has two little seashell trace fossils in it, which, which is uh, the holes that this, this thing has. And gosh, folks, I even found a piece of driftwood that looked like the face of a troll. It's got a long beard and he has two long arms. <laughs> yes, folks, I collect everything. And to give you an idea of where I got them from, it was on Lake Michigan's west side. This is the place where I grew up. And a lot of pretty tumbled glass right here. And a lot of pieces, and I got a piece of pyrite here, which is fool's gold. Unbelievably, this stuff is, uh, pyrite is more durable than gold, but yet it's worth nothing. Possible agate. A lot of good rocks. Then here's another collection. And I know what you're thinking. These rocks don't look very special. Well, I got a pop quiz for you folks. I would like you to tell me which collection is more special. Is it A, the collection on this side, or B, the collection on this side? Well, I know they're both special because Lake Michigan is a treasure. But if you guess this part, this side of this collection right here, you're dead wrong. It's actually these guys. Why? Because they are uh, from the very far away offshore landscape. And it was very difficult to get them. But this is where I started. And I took some underwater photos, if you can see them. It looks like it's just pure sand, and this is uh, so that suggests to us that when this used to be like a, when the lake level was lower thousands of years ago, this used to be a real big sandy beach, kind of like Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. Probably you could probably set up volleyball nets and and uh, picnic tables and have cookouts and everything else if you traveled in a time machine at this place uh, many thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. And this is where I got about a quarter of a mile out. And it was right here where I got rocks galore. This is where the rocks began. And again, folks, it was very difficult. I, had a, I only had like a 20-foot long homemade net where I had to basically, uh, you know, just dig, you know, dig all the way down into the rocks and maybe one out of every hundred tries I got a rock. And so... You know, it was kind of like operating a claw machine at a toy store, trying to put, you put 50 cents in and you get like uh, maybe one toy out of every 100 tries. If I had 50 cents for every time I tried to stick my pole down in those 20 foot depths, I probably would have been out of 100 or so dollars by now. So that's what makes this collection very special here, folks. And you really couldn't pick it. Unfortunately, you can't, you can't pick and choose what kinds you get. You're lucky you get anything at all. But one thing that I found out that was very interesting, a lot of these rocks are still very, are, they, they appear to be very smooth. As if they were on the present day shoreline. Which that suggests to us that this used to be the old beach. Very good collections. And you know, folks, I love what this uh, book, Lake Michigan Rock Pickers Guide, said when it said that rocks are going to be around for a long time, long after my grandchildren's children have passed. 
and long before my great great grandparents ever came around. So, and you know, with that being said, I would just love my children to know that whenever I die, I don't want them to cut or polish these rocks or turn them into jewelry because they wouldn't be rocks anymore. I just want to want them to go back to nature because so much other so much other material has been turned into cars and houses. We need to preserve the rocks that we have. So I, that's why you know I have to say this because I just love them so much that I would just want to give them back to nature because of the, because that's how special rocks are. Something to think about when you look at a rock collection. Well, I'm Victor and thank you for watching.